<laughs> Which tool do you want to use here, Denny, to end my Friday? Because this has been a great start. It's only Friday. just begun. It's only just begun. It's five o'clock somewhere, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you guys, you all were commenting on me wrestling this steering wheel around last week, and I was commenting on it myself. <laughs> so you made your horse. So I made myself a little vice. I used a two by four and a long bolt, and I think it's going to work. All right. Let me unscrew this nut here. Can you hear us and see us now? Can everybody hear us and see us? I sure hope so. I guess while you get this going, I can start setting these other cameras because we didn't quite get it set the cameras because I didn't know where you were going to be stitching at. Yeah, so we can get close up on right here. Yeah, everybody's good. Okay. Good. Can you hear me now? What happens sometimes when you reset your computer and then it changes the settings on the microphone? I don't know why it does that every time, but it's really annoying. Well, annoying or not, we're we're ready to go now. It matches what myself. It matches yourself. Huh? Yeah, so most people find me annoying, so I do. I know that. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> yeah. You know I am the middle child, so I'm good at aggravating people on both sides of my age bracket. All right. Well, I'm going <clears> to <throat> I thought I was going to have a lot of trouble that big steering wheel that I did for practice was that was had a large diameter to it and I had a lot of slack to take care of but this little thin steering wheel that I'm doing now didn't give me near the problem in that respect that to the other one did so we're going to come out pretty smooth on this and everything the the little uh, finger grip deals are coming out really nice i'm yeah, not having can, to really do anything to that you can see them right there i guess if they weren't coming i mean if you get it wet enough could you take your slicker tool or your bone folder and push it down in there yeah and i will after i'm done we'll go through and i'll show you how i'll slick it all out and get all the a lot of the marks that i've made out of it yeah chad and if you open up that uh black magic one click on the start menu and then it's over on the right hand side Here. all I can say is I'm glad those guys are fooling with that and not me because you all would really be confused yeah I may not even have to then you can just minimize that. And then that's how you. Liz doesn't show up one day. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the day we have problems. We have a disaster happening. I noticed, though, something about it. Liz always stands on the other side, and I stand on this side. Well, I probably. Uh, yeah. Well. Wonder why that is. You're left-handed. Yeah. And so am I. Either that, or I can go run to the computer and fix my mistakes that I've left on there. That's true. <laughs> yeah, you have to have access. <laughs> yeah, this, well, we made it to Friday, Denny. Yeah, we did. It was a long time coming. <laughs> yeah. But. Uh, so on this on this baseball stitch, just because I didn't get to watch the last time. So you go through one side and through the what, other. Are you going you down? Go, yeah, you go down from the finished side of the leather and come out on the unfinished side. I don't know if you can if you can see this or not. You probably can't. Uh, well, I think we can see on that little camera there yeah. on this side. Yeah, but anyway, I come out from the inside. So on this on this string here. String, I mean thread. We're gonna go in that way. Yeah, I'm I'm coming I'm coming from right here, out from the right side. Yeah, from the from the bottom side. Uh huh. And I'm going to the off opposite side and going in from the top. Okay. But if you see where my needle is, it's coming out between those two yeah. pieces. So wait here, move that other hand over there. There you go. 
So if you can see there, I'm with you. It's a, it's actually a pretty simple stitch. When you're doing it like this, where you've got to reach around and everything, it seems a lot more complicated than it is. But you know, they call it a baseball stitch because this is exactly what they use when they stitch those baseballs together. They also do it with softball, so I'm going to petition them to switch it to okay. softball stitch. Yeah, they don't do it with footballs, though. No, uh -uh, that's a different type of stitching. It's a football <laughs> stitch. It's a football stitch. <laughs> so every time that your needle goes in, you're going in the finish side and coming yeah. and yeah. coming out the at, at the middle. Yeah, I'm going okay. in the finish side and coming out the bottom side. Yeah, and that pulls through the middle. Yeah, and, and what the reason we're doing this is that it's a butt stitch. It'll cause these two pieces of leather to... Uh, to meet in the middle instead of being one up and one down yeah. and, and overlap. Um, do you know what th thickness thread you're using here on this wax thread? It's pre wax uh, This is a Niltex. I'm not sure the, ac the exact diameter of this thread. Uh, and I don't know if, it, if the, we list that on our catalog or not, but it's called Niltex. It's kind of a and it's a pretty heavy thread, heavier than I generally use to hand stitch with, but it it makes a good baseball stitch because it's bold. Let's see if I can find it in here. Do you think the board's good? See that stuff in there? You can switch it to four and see what happens. If it doesn't, we can always switch back to two. No. Yeah, you can't really see nothing. That's what I was afraid of. Those arms were going to be in the way. My arm? No, no, the... The arms of the steering wheel. We probably shouldn't cut those off and get them out of the way. <laughs> Let's say it was her dad's or her. It's her father-in-law. Okay, Chris's. Chris's, Chris's dad. dad. Yes. Nile Tex. It's a four ounce, or you can get twenty-five yards. And we do not put how thick it is. It's it's the equivalent of uh, if if you were looking at machine thread, the equivalent of probably a three forty six. Yeah, I was gonna say it looks a little, little thicker than a two seventy seven. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's waxed, and that'll give it a thicker look too. So. Does it matter to sew? Is it easier while it's the leather's dry? As Christopher's asking. It's easier to uh, make your two halves pull together. Well, I guess Chris was asking about the thickness. I don't know. Because if who you notice there, we've got we've got a gap uh -huh. in the center. Yeah. And you need to pull that together, and uh, that's another thing this baseball stitch does for you. So better better when it's dry, or better no, when better it's wet. Better when it's wet. So you but you have it. to be careful because you can you can pull the stitches completely yeah. through. That's my problem with my sheer strength. Yeah. Your ears. <laughs> Oops. See, I was paying attention to you guys. And I malfunctioned that stitch. Sorry, I'm good at distractions. Better that you catch it when you do it instead of like three more stitches yeah, down later, the road. Later, yeah. I bet you pretty soon we're going to get a comment that you're now wearing two copper bracelets instead of one. Yeah, we will now. <laughs> we will now. This is called how you direct the direct the audience. I don't know. I, you know, I. When you get older, you develop arthritis. And my right hand, my first finger, I've got a lot of it. Now, had you sprayed this before we got started? I got it good and wet before. And and that'll just show you, you can let this stuff dry out and then wet it back up. As long as you haven't put any kind of a finish on it, it'll wet back up. And when you wet it, did you wet the whole? Yes. The whole wheel? I wetted the whole wheel. If you just wet one part of it, to, you'll end up with a water spot. Yeah. And plus the fact that, you know, I want to get it wet because I'm going to uh, shape and mold around on it after I'm done lacing. Yeah, I see we got some shaping molding yeah. tools over here. Yeah. 
along with this hammer that you're probably going to use on me. Yeah, that's that's my tool for you. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, don't see anything in here that you need a hammer unless you're hammering down well, here. I might threads, not, the middle might, of your threads. I might not need a hammer, but I brought it just in case. Yeah, I about used it on my computer earlier. <laughs> You know, you guys that are tech savvy, I, I commend you. Cause, uh, Sometimes technology has a mind of its own, and if you don't remember what settings to change, for some reason when I restart my computer, it likes to switch it from 48,000 hertz to 40, or from 40, 44.1 to 48. So i got to remember to switch that whenever I restart my computer. Denny, are you crossing the thread in a certain way every stitch? No, well, you just have to make sure you, you don't tangle stuff up. You don't, you know, you go from one side to the other, but you want to make sure that uh, you haven't made, yeah, that you haven't twisted your threads around. Yeah. You know, and that's what I'm, that's what's so hard to do when you're reaching around in between these spokes and everything. That's why you got you a steering wheel horse. Yeah. At least I have two hands to do this to make a mistake with now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can add two more hands in if you need them. Right. I don't know if there'll be much help. Right. You know Which, what I didn't do? You know what I didn't do? I didn't do Liz's catchphrase when we start. Hey guys! Yeah, that's the whole problem. <laughs> that's where we're. That's the problem we're having. Yeah, but this you you use two needles on one thread, just like you you would uh, if you were going to do a saddle stitch. Only you're, uh, you know, you aren't. To, Trying to accomplish exactly the same thing. But I guarantee you, yesterday I went through and, and stitched everything with this little part that I'm doing without this vise. And if I would have had the vise, I would have been done twice as fast. And I wouldn't have said near as many bad words. Oh, but Darcy just used Denny's. What's that? Oh, Darcy did? Yeah, she's the Denny emote, the Denny Burn emote. Interesting. Well, there should be a new emote on there that I added in. I thought, anyway. Chris says, I have a friend who needs a vintage car steering wheel to be refurbished, and now I know how to do it. Good. Good. Yeah, there's a, several people. Jim back in the shop says, well, I'm going to recover my steering wheel. It's really not hard to do. It's just time consuming and, and until you really get going on it, it's pretty frustrating. Yeah. This this stitch part is the hardest part of it. You know, getting your leather ready and, and all that to, is the simple part. But uh, just wrestling this around. That Whoever wrote in uh, Wednesday and asked if they could do it to their father's car without him knowing it, you know, if if you do it on the vehicle, you probably have an easier job with your with your lacing than than if you do it off. Uh, Angela asks the pros and cons of veg tan versus chrome tan, or extra concerns about dyeing the veg and not having it bleed on your hands as you're driving. Uh. For one thing, if you're going to dye it, I would use the Pro Dye. It doesn't seem to bleed nearly as bad. Uh, for another thing, uh, if you use a, a chrome tan leather, you aren't going to. It won't have the same molding capabilities as this veg tan does. 
uh, so you'll have a more difficult time well with what I'm doing right now this is kind of giving me fits right now I'm having trouble getting it stretched around there it's the final little part Darcy is new you know okay I don't know why it's not available for you to use it hmm. I'm seeing if I can do it on my phone oh yeah it's there what are you trying to do? Uh, just more technology things. Oh, something that I wouldn't understand. You, I mean, you might know it better than I would. You saw how we got this stream started, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to decide. I'd ask Liz if we could move stuff around, trying to figure out what we were doing next week. I know that the plan was to talk about some sewing machines and on Friday, but I don't remember what we were going to do on well, Wednesday. I, I thought uh, she had decided, it seemed to me, that we were going to do the the fringe. Oh, fringe next week. I think that's what... Uh, fringe on Wednesday, sewing machines on Friday, if Clayton's available. I saw you working on something else over there yesterday, too. Well, you know, we made those fly rod cases. Uh-huh. I'm working on possibly a, a, a case. fly reel case a to case go with, reel? with the rod case. And then you could hang it from it? Yeah. That's my idea. I'm in the prototype stage right now. I know. I'm surprised you let me carry around that steel plate so close to your reel. <laughs> that probably would have ended that. That reel's not worth anything like those those uh, Damascus knives were. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you, I can you, touch everything on this yeah. table. <laughs> yeah, everything's fine. I'm going to skip one stitch here because I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Skip one stitch? Well, I'm going to double one stitch on one side. Oh, because I keep talking and... Well, so no, French I don't Friday? think it's your fault. I think I just... Uh... French Friday. French Friday? French. French Friday. Oh, you can do French Friday. Could work. We can make just about anything work. Or we can have a plan for the videos and then Liz decides she wants to switch it and we just do something else. Yeah. We're versatile. <laughs> something. As long as everybody's having fun with what we got going on. All right. Now, see, I went through that one hole twice. Yeah. But don't tell anyone. Yeah. Can you work back down lower again? Is that too hard for you? Like that? Yeah. It's a little bit easier to see at that point. You're getting out of my camera frame. Well, what I just did, I'm glad I was out of your camera frame. Yeah. I'll just take suggestions and be quiet as you continue to work. I'm about done here. You see, I've got three more. Three more. Actually, I've got four on this front side. I don't know if you all remember when, when I punched these holes, I punched them each side separate. Uh huh. And I came out. I've got one extra hole on this front side that I don't have on the back side. Well, we'll see how to... But one reason for that is I just doubled one hole on the back side to take up some slack that I was gaining. We're about there, you guys. Uh, what weight of leather did you use? This is four to five ounce. Four to five an ounce. Four to five ounce. Yeah. And you can use three to four ounce if you want. But it's going to be, it's, that's a little bit light. It'll be easy to tear the holes out when you're pulling these laces tight. You make it a little bit wider, make you a little bit wider strip so it doesn't pull so tight. Yeah. Would that help some? Well, it would help. Yeah, you wouldn't have to, you wouldn't have to pull so tight, but it wouldn't be stretched nice and tight. It wouldn't take these shapes 
as nicely. Yeah. But uh, I'm obviously into a firmer part of the leather right here because it's not stretching nearly as easy. Uh, Lil Fair asks, says, do we offer finance for sewing machines? On the sewing machines, if you go uh, to the shop now and then go down to the bottom, I think, is where we have production machines or something like that, and you look at the Cobra ones, actually anything on our website that I think is over $1,500 or something like that, it will pop up uh, the financing option on there. See, now you pulled her to... I just pulled that through. Now what happens? No. Now you don't have one extra hole on the back side. <laughs> I can't <laughs> hole. What I'm going to do right now. Go through that one hole one more time. Pull it nearly as tight. Uh, also, a little fear, at the bottom of the main page, if you scroll to the bottom, I believe you click on uh, financing and we'll take you to the same the same type of page where you can get to where uh, you can submit a form for the financing option. See, you're trying to work up there out of my screen again to fix your boo-boos. Well, that wasn't the reason I was doing oh. that. It just happened. But... Anna Bushmeyer, what's on the list for future videos? Personally, I am hoping for some more horse tack related videos because I've been itching to make myself some new stuff for herself. Clippers. Well, Denny, what have we been working on the past couple days? Uh, do you know? Do you remember the name of it? A death drag strap. Yeah, well, this one is actually a Stroud strap, but they're very similar between them. I think it's the first that either of us has made, which is like a nylon strap that we wrap biker chap around. Yeah. Uh, but let's it's made for a, a trick riding thing. Yeah, yeah. Let me uh, let me dig something mm -hmm. out over here. This is for this this actually the same rider. This was her saddle that she was a child. And it is in some pretty rough shape. Is that the one you took apart to like? Many, many moons ago? It wasn't a year, a year ago. ago. It wasn't a year ago. So the answer to your question is yes. In October, there's a date that we have over there that I think for two days, Tony and Denny are. I'm taking my vice off. Tony and Denny are doing some small saddle repairs or repairs on a small saddle. Yeah. Some are those tapaderos on the uh huh, those were little tapaderos. So, we'll be some adjusting and fixing those tapaderos and putting some uh, we're gonna put a new lining on. The we skirts. are gonna re reline the skirts, probably new stirrup leathers. It looks like stirrup yes. leathers are in pretty bad shape, so we'll have to do we're gonna teach Tony how to do some tooling. I bet okay, we'll do that. So, that's the plan. All right, you guys, this thing is laced up. Now I'm going to take this handy little rub stick. You can use anything. You can use a bone folder, a hammer handle, if you've got a nice smooth hammer handle. This is a stick that I made out. You won't believe what I made this out of. What would you say this is from? One of those wooden shoe horns. This is from a loofah sponge. <laughs> <laughs> Went into the shower, stole your wife's loop of sponge. Well, it was kind of worn out, yeah. and, and she threw it in the trash, and I grabbed it, and I thought, man, I could smooth that down. Could you use the backside of a beveler? You could. Anything that's smooth, smooth and hard. Yeah. And I'm just going to rub these laces. I'm pretty hard-headed, but my head's not very smooth, so I probably couldn't use that very well. Yeah. Let me adjust the camera there. But you want to use a lot of pressure when you do this because you're trying to smooth all these laces out. Because that's where your hands are going to... I don't know about you, but I'll be driving along if I've got a little imperfection on my steering wheel. I just start picking at it. I know. know. I'm the same way. I'll feel it there and then you just can't leave it alone. Yeah. I think it's a habit that we all kind of have. Uh-huh. 
but, but this is smooth stuff out here. You get rid of a lot of the marks that you made on it. Yeah. Like these two new screw holes that where you screwed your bike on there. Now every time I'm back here, I'm going to have to fiddle with them. Okay, well, you're allowed. I gave myself a splinter though already. All right. Now we'll take all these little finger notches. Uh-huh. Now I'm going to go through and accentuate every one of these with this little rub stick that I made. This is a lot like, I don't know if you've all are familiar with a, a rope rolled edge on a saddle. Or they used to make a lot of belts like that too with a rope roll on them. And it was just a piece of rope that was wrapped around like the belt or the saddle, the cantle of the saddle. And then you put leather over it. And then you... Uh, is that the Cheyenne roll? Yeah, yeah, they did it on a Cheyenne roll mostly. <laughs> I learned that term the other day. <laughs> uh, Angela, the quotes from yesterday, you are not going to the wrong place. Lou got some of them put in, but she couldn't find your account. But I'll go back to the Facebook messages and I will find you. That's my, that's my afternoon. That's what my afternoon looks like. I think, Chad, are you doing your, are you doing your horse yep. stuff on Twitch? After party. You guys that are listening to this and don't go on that Twitch, you ought to see that deal with Chad making. Well, Chad hasn't tooled a whole lot, but he's uh, he's doing a really fine job on this horse and rider that he's doing. I'm impressed. Well, he is an, he is an artist anyway. He does comic book stuff, so. Let me see if I can find it. It's over there on the show. I believe a year or two ago, didn't you tool with me a little bit, Chad? Yeah, it was only that wallet bag that we did. I thought we were going to do some more. I guess we never did get around to it, huh? Yeah. He got tired of waiting on you and started on this Things project. Things happened. I think it was before all the, uh, the fun stuff happened. Yeah, oh, all the COVID stuff, yeah. That changed huh? everything. <laughs> And I forgot to get one thing, that oxalic acid. I was going to say saddle soap. Uh, yeah, but that'll be after it dries, which won't be till tomorrow. You mean go get you some oxalic acid? Yeah, I've got a little little sheepskin pad hanging on one of those pegs there by the oxalic acid. It okay. says oxalic acid only on it. Oh, okay. So. Well, how about you show that off while I go grab All right. that? Yeah, this is a... What Chad's been doing? It's a girl riding a horse. Uh, it's pretty authentic and got a nice pulling collar on the on the horse. She riding got her kind of a buckaroo style hat on. Pair of chinks. The old horses are just stepping out real pretty too. Looks good, Chad. Excellent. Looks really good. You know, I'm not much of a figure carver, but. You did a great job. Yeah, you used a lot of different tools and made a lot of different uh, features on that. And you're going to work on it some more today, huh? Yeah, I should be able to finish it this afternoon. As quick as that other part went. That's great. It it's, The figure carving is like kind of like what Kevin was talking about the other day. I remember him saying, there's really no place to stop. You've just got to quit somewhere. I was able to locate it. It's the, almost, it's the white <laughs> in bark <laughs> color. It turns white after you yeah. step on it. But I, and I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's some little uh, gray spots here and black spots on this steering wheel. And those are little particles of metal off of a, uh, like a, a knife strop or something. But uh, they get on this veg tan leather when it's wet. Could it have got on there from your, uh, 
from your horse? It could have, or just your from, from the, the metal, the inside part of this, steering wheel's metal, you know? Yeah. Any any kind of little metal particles or dust that you get on will yeah. leave those gray oh spots on, on wet veg tan leather. Yeah, it probably won't focus because uh, it's too thin. But you can see one right here. Yeah. 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 But it's got a, you know, if, if you were here looking at it, it's got a whole lot of those little gray specks on it. Yep. Yeah. But this oxalic acid, <clears throat> we sell it, I think, in one ounce packets, and you just I just mix it up in this uh, plastic pot bottle full of water. But you just uh, rub it on there, and that stuff just magically disappears. You can use a saddle soap and paint thinner, whatever you want to, and those spots will stay. But when you put this oxalic acid on it, they just go away. But that's the final step. You've got to be pretty much, if you're tooling anything and want to clean it, wait till after you're done tooling and make it the last thing you do before you do any kind of a finish on it. That's Tangled Up Leather asked if we could do a halter. A halter? We, did we do a halter in that one video where we did some horse tack? Uh, no, we did a Oh, head, we head did stall. a back cinch and a head stall. Yeah. Halters, I don't know. We. I guess we could do a halter at some point. I always hated to do them because you can buy a halter so much cheaper than you can make one. Unless you're making a show halter, you know. We did that one. Put a bunch of silver mountains on it. I did that one with you. One. It wasn't a halter. It was a one-eared one head stall. Yeah, stall. head a stall. A slip ear. Yeah. Head stalls are a different story, you know, but... Halters are something people tie their horses up to them and horses break them. <laughs> or the, yeah, those, you know, those the, nylon ones are just so so yeah. cheap. Yeah. And, you know, the best kind of a halter, really, in my opinion, are those rope halters. You know, they're just not a rope, so yep. there's no hardware on them anywhere. You know, even the rope is, is tied on with a, without hardware. And horses can't hardly break that nylon stuff. They spend more time trying to untie the knot than they yeah. do trying to break loose. Yeah. Angela asked, would the oxalic acid strip no, dye? No, it will not. And it won't uh, It won't clean like an oil stain or a, uh, it won't clean a dye stain. Uh, but, it, but it will get rid of those uh, little, uh, little metal marks and it will kill mold. If you've got a saddle that's moldy, you know, uh, treat it with oxalic acid. Just, just mix them up in a bottle and use a rag or a sponge or whatever and, and just sponge it on your saddle. But I've got to stress, you know, if, you, if you're if you doing a saddle, do the whole thing. Don't just do one little patch of it, you know. Because uh, and you wind up with the same thing if you just wetted one part of the saddle. Right, right. You'll end up with a water, water mark. spots. And <clears throat> I don't know. It's not something you want to overdo. Uh, I wouldn't do it like on a weekly basis mm -hmm. or a yearly basis. Right. But but if you've got to mold on a saddle, you know, it will kill the mold. and it, it won't come back for a long time. And if it comes back, it's because of the place you're keeping it. Not, right. Not because the mold was there and, and regrew. Right. Maybe find a different storage. Yeah. Right. Right. Situation for the saddle. Right. Andrea, I need to get that stuff. Oxilic, uh, the oxalic acid. How long will it last before you, uh, you pre-mix it? Or is it a pre -mix? It'll last, shoot, that bottle there, I probably mixed it up well over a year ago. Yeah. I've still got a little bit left. I don't know if I can find it in here or not. I don't remember where it's at. Maybe in the chemicals. Yeah, probably is. There it is. Yeah. Two, three bucks for a uh, one ounce. Yeah. Yeah, and a one ounce package will mix up like a 16 ounce pop bottle. Cool. So it says mix one ounce of bleach with one pint of water to clean veg tan. Yeah. Uh, oh, le the leather bleach is oxalic acid. That's another name for it is yeah, leather bleach. bleach. Yeah, that's what everybody used to call it. It's just bleach. But yeah. It's oxalic acid. Yeah. That's what it actually is. And don't drink that stuff. It'll make you climb a thorn tree naked. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I never tried that before. <laughs> you would if you drank that. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> let's keep it over there. Yeah. All right. In part one, when you were cutting the length, you rounded the ends. Was that for the curvature of the wheel and coverage? It, it was because because the outside of this wheel is is a larger diameter than the inside. So when I curved that cut, I I lost about an inch on the inside dimension. Yeah. And that helped. The only thing is, you know, I ended up with with a lump right down here at the bottom, but it's right in the center, you know, and it looks like it's supposed to be there. I think if I was doing it over, I would probably uh, uh, French seam stitch or something uh -huh. is what they call that. You, you stitch it and then lay those those parts back and stitch again. It would actually be three stitch lines there, but there wouldn't be that big lump. I don't. What if you put it? What if you put that all the way at the top? You know, everybody gets in and they'll, they'll drive at the bottom, or they'll drive with just yeah, one hand or, at the top. Or they drive something. just right at the top. Yeah, <laughs> gives you something to catch when you go to yeah. turn. Yeah, you always know where the center of your wheel is. Kind of like a Reuben knob, you know, yeah. one of those tractor knobs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't think they like those on your car that you drive on the no. road. No, but I knew you know a kid that <laughs> yeah. I used to go hunting with, and his dad had an old uh, International Scout without power steering or anything but uh -huh. he said they were hunting and going over boulders and stuff just kind of idling over stuff and he said they hit one and it spun that wheel around and he had one of those knobs uh -huh. on it it broke his thumb yeah <laughs> yeah i like to get one of those international yeah. scouts i had a problem with the bedpan resting out oh, yeah yeah all right what else you got to tell us uh Gosh, I don't know. That's about it. If you've got a bunch of marks, just keep rubbing it with your rub stick, you know. But this thing will dry out, and right now it looks a little bit rough, or it will to you, you know, while it's still wet. But when it dries, it'll slick, slick up, you know. And the more you rub it, uh, the more of a patina it's going to take, an original patina. Uh-huh. You know, uh, if you don't touch it, It'll be kind of grainy looking. Yeah. But when you rub it, you know, you've heard of a hand rub finish, you know, that, that's what it does. It, it uh, makes a nice patina on the leather. Yeah. And can you twist it like this one? This stitch goes down just a little bit. Can you twist uh, it back up? Or does I, it kind of get stuck I in place? It. I doubt it. That's, that's, the hand, that's the handmade part of yeah, it. Yeah, and that's something you need to be aware of as, as you're lacing this up. You know, it, you don't want it to spiral on you. Yeah. You know, but that's that's pretty good. The way it would like right there, that, yeah, that's right not here. It goes a little bit down, but not that's bad. not bad though. How many steering wheel covers have you done? Before this is number two. Yeah, the first one was when you the, the other one that Liz had in the first day. video. Yeah. So <laughs> there you go. Yeah. You've now become an expert. Yeah, you learn a lot of things when you when you do something. You know, especially when you do it two or three times, like I do. Yeah, on, well, on the same project. Right. <laughs> I've all, I've finished two. I've made seven. Yes. <laughs> I guess that's right. <laughs> uh, any changes in uh, a smooth steering wheel without the nut? No. Uh, no. Uh, It'll probably have a tendency to want to spiral on you more, so you'll have to yeah. take that into account more as you as you're doing your lacing. But to, but really, there's no difference because the other wheel that I did was smooth. It didn't have those uh, finger grips. So once this dries out, are you going to do your normal knee yeah. foot oil I'll, I'll or just, just saddle soap? I'll just oil it, yeah, and and saddle soap it. Uh, I'll probably uh, put a, an acrylic finish on it. Yeah. You know, but but this, you know, as you drive, it depends on where where you hold your wheel, you know. But it most of the time, one or two people are the only ones that drive a vehicle right. for the most part, and uh, they'll each have a place where they have their hands, and pretty soon that'll start to show up. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, it'll be it'll be nice. It's better than those ones that you get at the auto parts store. Yeah, a little more personal there. My dad oh, used they, to get those with those. Uh, um, that synthetic. Jeff and I were talking about that the other day. That they used to sell them. They were just a strip, about an inch uh -huh. and a half wide, and you just you just wrapped it around there, yeah. and then it had a piece of plastic lace that yeah. you wrapped around each seam. Yeah. And uh, I remember I used to have one on an old car that I had. Yeah, we had a an old Vega that had one on it. Mm. But that's something they don't last very long. This ought to last a long time. 
Yeah, it, I would imagine so. Plus, you get that cool patina on there. Yeah, yeah. All right. I don't know if we got any more any more questions, Chad. I know you kind of been. I've been stalling so we can ask all the questions here. Yeah. So I don't let you get out too early. Yeah. Get your nap started early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need a nap now. Yeah. Now that I've done this. Yeah, this came out pretty good though. I'm pretty proud of it, other than that one little snafu there at the very end. But I think I that work out. It's a character mark. Yeah. I think that that's what we've decided on. Yeah, there you end up with a lot of character marks when you do leather work. Yeah, <laughs> I've got character marks on my leg from riding bikes where the pedal come back and whack me. Oh yeah, <laughs> there'll be character marks. Yeah. All right, I don't. I'm not seeing any questions pop yeah. up on our screen. Yeah. I think we're done for. We're gonna today. call call it a week. Call it a week. Yeah. Yeah. You're ready. I know. Yeah. I got some I got some other stuff to put in from our live shopping that we did yesterday. That's always fun. You want to come in here and do that one time? I might come in and visit one time while you're doing it. <laughs> for a minute. Yeah. Just shake your head and walk off. Yeah, I know you guys. <laughs> All right. Well, if you want to join us uh, for a little bit of the after party, as we like to call it, Chad's going to be finishing up his horse over on Twitch. Just look at Springfield Leather Company uh, there, Springfield Leather Co., yeah. is what the name of it is and we have a good time over there we also have a good time on on youtube and and on facebook is where we do the live shopping so just a different platform where we can join over there and stay a little bit longer uh so look forward to it should be getting the, the store tour done and then also uh i have more of that herman oak video where chef came in and talked to us to put out as well there's two hours of footage there that i gotta go through and i think i've done 40 minutes yeah. of it Chef Herman is a neat guy. He's yeah. really neat and knowledgeable, just and just a nice fella. Yeah, you can use Herman Oak on your steering wheel. Yeah, that's what I did. Uh, and by the way, that that one question about what finish I'm going to put on it, <clears throat> you can dye it now if you want to. Also, mm. you know, you want to be careful when you. Uh, Would this you, one wouldn't be bad because it's black. But if you're dyeing in color, you know these spokes. Like if you've got. A, white spoked wheel you want to be careful not get dye on that would you oil it first and then oil, dye it? oil it and then dye it and then put another little dab of oil on that and then just buff the heck out of it yeah and put a, an acrylic finish on it sounds like a plan all right well thanks everybody for always joining us on the videos leave some comments below hit the subscribe button whatever bell for notifications all the crazy things that you do on YouTube. And we will be back next Wednesday with some more fun. Fringe, it sounds like. Or maybe we'll move Fringe to Friday. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? See who ya. Knows? See you guys. <laughs>